we turn to the proof that um, S defined as before, so it's a, a union of all the uh, cuts in the family A is indeed the supremum or least upper bound for the collection. Okay, so let's prove that. We were assumptions, so we we have uh, non non empty family. A of cut um, bounded from above okay so now uh, we have defined S so we define, we had defined already S. Remember, also we, in fact, we're not defining, we had already defined, so we're just recalling. Call uh, S is just the union of all the elements in A, in calligraphic A. All the cuts there are in the, in this family. I don't know if I can make clear this is a calligraphic game, but okay. And so this is the definition of S, and we want to show that this is uh, the least upper bound. And it's also a cut. I mean, otherwise, uh, as we mentioned before, that we have we have not constructed uh, the real numbers with the right properties. That you also have a real number that is in the least upper bound. So you want the least upper bound to be uh, a cut as well. You have to uh, exit the framework you're working in to get a new element, a new type of object to bound everything from above and be uh, the least upper bound. You're considering cuts, so your least upper bound should be a cut in order to improve on what we have for the rational numbers. So S is the union of all these, uh, all the cuts, uh, all of these cuts in A. And so we first must show start by showing that S is a cut. To that end, we first prove that um, S is not empty. Okay, so um, how do we go about that? We know the family is non empty. So there is at least one cut A in A, right? Otherwise the family would be empty. But now A is not empty because it is a cut. And if you remember the first condition, the condition C1 uh, asks that uh, a cut uh, is a non-empty set, which is not equal to Q. Okay, and since um, S contains all the elements in A, in calligraphic A, and this is not equal to the empty set, then S is non-empty. 
Okay, so this property just follows from the fact that A is a collection of cuts. It's a non-empty collection. So we were using both the fact that the collection is, is contains at least one cut and the fact that a cut cannot be empty. That's it. <coughs> Sorry. So now to show that S is not equal to Q, we must show the fact that, I mean, we must use the fact that the collection is bounded. We know that there is a cut or B in the set R a cut B such that um, such that a belongs to A, implies A is contained in B, right? So there's a bound for every element, that, something that contains every element in the set. So is, and we're using the notation here for cuts, which is the same. So this is less than or equal to B. A is less than or equal to B for every A in A. B is the same for all elements, otherwise it will not be a bound. So there's a B that exists independently of any element in A. It just depends on the family as a whole. And such that any element in A is less than or equal to B, meaning that it's contained in this cut uh, B. Then, um, a is contained in B, and this is true for any A. In fact, if you take the union of all these A's, you conclude that that is still containing B, because B contains each one of these uh, sets. But this is nothing more than S. Okay? And from here, um, since B is strictly contained contained in Q, this is not Q. We We have that the same is true for the smaller S. Right, so B contains S, and since B contains S, uh, and B is not all of Q, then there must be an element that is not in B, and if it's not in B, it's not in S. So S cannot be all of Q. So that's the second the second thing we had to prove. Now there there are more properties we need to have. Okay, the third property is that if if Q in Q Q is less than some T in S Oh, 
I'm just running it. Well, this is not going to be very orderly. Let me just. Hopefully. We have to prove the following. You have to summarize the property here at the beginning. So. Um, So given T in S, Q in Q, Q less than T, this implies Q must belong to S, right? So if we have any element in Q which is smaller than some element in S, then Q must be contained in S as well. Remember, all numbers, all rational numbers that are smaller than an element in the cut must be in the cut. How do we show that? So let's um, let T be an element of S. By definition, definition of S Uh, T belongs to uh, some A in A, right? So, or if you want, if you prefer, there exists some A in calligraphic A. such that T belongs to A. Remember, this is just, uh, this comes back to sense theory. If uh, an element belongs to a union, it must belong to one of the, uh, uh, the, the sets you're taking the union of. Okay. And now, now, now if you let But Q in Q be such that Q is less than T, then Q belongs to A because A is a cut. <coughs> T belongs to A, right, which is a cut. And since Q is less than T, it must belong to A as well. But A is contained in S. Remember, S contains all the elements in the collection. Because it's a unit of all of them. Okay, so that's the second property. Uh, the property C2. Now we have to show that if we have... A um, I mean, we cannot have a maximum, so if show um, that T belongs to S implies that there is exists a Q Q in side S in S with a uh, T smaller than Q. Well, just like before, let T in S. We know that there, just like before, just like in the previous point. There is some A in the collection A in the family A of cuts uh, such that T belongs to T 
belongs to that set A. Okay, and again, since A is a cut, there, there exists a Q in A such that Q to the T is less than Q. But Q belongs to A, which is containing S. Remember that S is the unit of all the A's in A. Okay, so we've shown the property because we've started from a T in S and then we show the existence of a bigger uh, Q in Q because if, since it's an A it must be an element of Q and such a Q is in S. And Q is bigger than T such that Q is in S. So it doesn't contain a uh, maximum element. Okay, so that's the last property. So we've shown that this is a cut. Now we need to show that uh, S is an upper bound. Uh, but this is very short. Given set A in that it can cut in A. A, of course, is contained in the union of all the, the elements in capital A. So let's call those sets C. C in but this is just S. And this, I mean, going back to the notation that we use for the ordering, is the same as saying that A is less than or equal to S. Okay, so it is an upper bound. I mean, S is uh, given to us as the union, and if you pick any uh, A in A, in calligraphic A, a is going to be less than or equal to S with, uh, with that ordering, with that, with the ordering corresponding to inclusion. Now we need to show that S is the, the least upper bound. Okay, so it's the least upper bound. And this proof is actually almost the same as the, the proof of the property that S is not equal to Q. So if B is a bound an upper bound family calligraphic A then that means that B contains A for every A in A 
but then you can take unions on both um, both sides over a in a but on the right hand side you will not be doing anything on the other hand uh, if you take a look at the left hand side you'll get the union A in the family A and this is nothing more than S so if you have any upper bound S is smaller than B because this inclusion here is the same as saying that S is less than or equal to B so as you can see we have shown the fact that S is the least upper bound, which is the the property that was that the rational numbers were lacking, uh, and this would basically conclude everything about the construction of the real numbers, except that what we uh, said to prove from the beginning, we said to construct was an extension of the rational number, something that would contain the rational numbers and would preserve all the properties and all the operations and everything else, is that would include these uh, m missing uh, numbers, uh, like the square root of 2. Um, and so this is actually left in the book as an exercise. We actually just did exercise 8.6.8. .8. Well, this is uh, right here, this is 8.6.9. And now, by right now, you should suspect that the rational numbers are going to be identified with the cuts corresponding to all the rational numbers below that given number. So, um, So given R some rational number in Q, you know a rational number in Q. Remember we have CR. This is the set of T's of numbers in Q such that T is less than R. Hmm? And so we're going to identify so we identifying the rational number R with this cut, with the corresponding cut. cut. And so what is left for you to see, uh, which is actually not hard, it's just a matter of, again, and as I said before, a matter of chasing definitions. Uh, one can show, and this is what the exercise is asking you, that a if you add two cuts corresponding to rational numbers then you get the cut corresponding to the addition of these uh, two rational numbers and this holds for all for all R 
and s in q. And in the same way, in the same way, this to show that you multiply two rational numbers, the two dedicating cuts of this form corresponding to this rational cut, then you can just get the cut corresponding to the product of these two rational numbers. They ask me to show it for the for the positive cuts, but rational cut, but it's actually true for any cuts, or it's built so that that works. And the ordering is preserved, so meaning that if um, CR is less than or equal to CS, I mean, this is actually an if and only if condition. is less than or equal to s. And naturally, I mean, this is zero is a uh, rational number, and c and the identity element zero corresponded to rational cut. So it's all the corresponded to all the negative rational numbers. And the same thing can be said about the, the identity. The identity is the one corresponding to 1, uh, the rational cut corresponding to 1. And we have all these properties, and we can just embed the structure of the rational numbers into um, into R in this way. So consider the corresponding rational cuts. And this is everything that we need to know then about the construction of the real numbers and yeah i mean that's uh, that's it i mean we'll try to forget that we even had to do this but we had to do it anyway before uh, manipulating uh, terms we know nothing about okay Okay, so now we are allowed to speak about the, the real numbers and we can forget that they are actually dedicated cuts and operate with them and handle them and do operations with them as we are used to. Okay, the only difference is now that we know that the rational numbers, in addition to all the, the properties of Q, satisfy the least upper bound property to the supreme property. Which is stated as an axiom uh, in in the book in the first section, uh, in section one, in section two. I don't remember. But so now we don't have to assume anything. We know that there is an, such an object called the, the real numbers, and we'll take it from there in the next module. Okay. So, good luck. <laughs>